A lawsuit accusing Ed Sheeran of plagiarism is now pending, but he has refuted the claims, saying it would be dumb of him to take such a well-known song. Let's see whether he's right. With a career covering more than a decade and a number of chart-topping albums, Ed Sheeran is not new to hit tunes. His fame hasn't come without controversy, however. Throughout his career, he's been accused of plagiarizing. British singer-songwriter Ed Sheeran is well known for his upbeat pop songs and moving ballads. He has sold millions of CDs and had international success as a musician, garnering several accolades. Sheeran is renowned for producing genuine, intimate songs that often draw from his own experiences and feelings. But in order to refute accusations that his song Thinking Out Loud plagiarized Marvin Gaye's song Let's Get It On, British musician Ed Sheeran showed up in court in New York City. This week, a federal court in Manhattan opened the much-anticipated copyright infringement trial against Ed Sheeran. In his 2014 hit Thinking Out Loud, Sheeran is alleged of ripping off Marvin Gaye's legendary R&B song Let's Get It On. The complaint claims that Sheeran improperly used the harmonic progressions and melodic and rhythmic elements that make up the heart of Gaye's song. It was brought forward by the family of the song's co-writer and composer Ed Townsend. The complaint claims that Sheeran plagiarized those sections and, quote, on a regular basis, repeated it throughout thinking. This indisputable musical match was previously noted by music industry professionals, as reflected by various social media and articles about the matter. The complaint says, The lawsuit was filed on July 11, 2017, and Sheeran has subsequently refuted the claims made by the heirs. Sheeran, on the other hand, has argued in court documents that the heart of Let's Get It On is just made up of typical components of hit songs that aren't, quote, unique, genuine, or protectable. What specifically has Ed Sheeran been charged for copying? Sheeran is charged with stealing just the musical structure and not the full emotion or words of Gay's song. According to the Associated Press, the jury will only consider whether Sheeran plagiarized certain building blocks, which are represented on sheet music that is registered with the USPTO. What else has Ed Townsend's family said? The matter has garnered the attention of Townsend's relatives. According to CBS News, Townsend's daughter Catherine Townsend Griffin said last month that this must stop. Beyond having to stand here and worry about people extracting other people's property, the world is already chaotic enough. Ben Crump, a well-known civil rights lawyer who is defending the family of Townsend, is quoted in the article as claiming that thinking out loud is an example of how black artists' work have been appropriated in the past. Black musicians have produced, inspired, and disseminated music throughout the globe for far too long, according to Crump. And Ed Townsend's family considers artists' infringement of black musicians, including Mr. Sheeran's, to be just another instance of artists taking advantage of the creativity and output of black singers and composers. Previously faced allegations of copyright infringement. Oh yes, he has been sued for alleged copyright infringement in a number of cases, in addition to this one. Due to the supposed similarities between Thinking Out Loud and Let's Get It On, Sheeran is also being sued in two other cases in the same courtroom. According to the New York Times, they were filed by a business that owns 11.11% .11 of Let's Get It On. One of Townsend's sons sold the interest to the business, secured asset sales. The two authors of Amazing, a song sung by Matt Cardle, sued Sheeran in 2016 on the grounds that he had plagiarized parts of the song for photograph. According to the Times, the dispute was resolved in 2017, and the amazing authors were included in the photograph credits. In a lawsuit, the musician Sammy Shokri, also known as Sammy Switch, claimed that Sheeran's 2017 song Shape of You plagiarized his 2015 song O.Y. Oh with a court ruling that he neither deliberately nor instinctively copied Switch's song, Sheeran prevailed in the UK lawsuit last spring. Even while there were similarities between the one-bar phrase, the court concluded that these similarities were, quote, only a starting point for a possible copyright violation. Sheeran stated concern over this type of litigation after the court case ended, saying he feels, quote, like states like this are way too typical now and have become a culture where a claim is made with the idea that an agreement will be cheaper than taking it to court, even if there is no basis for the claim. Sheeran said he was, quote, happy with the outcome, 
but added that he felt this type of litigation was, quote, way too typical. Sheeran said that he believes situations like this is really destructive to the songwriting industry, and cited the number of songs published each day as evidence. As reported by Music Business Worldwide, he said pop music only uses a certain number of notes and a select few chords. If 60,000 songs are added to Spotify daily, coincidences are inevitable. What has Sheeran testified on? Sheeran personally went to the court this week to present his case, according to The Guardian. He said that, quote, most pop songs can fit over most pop songs, using the Beatles' Let It Be and Bob Marley's No Woman No Cry as examples. He is believed to have stated, quote, if I had done what you're alleging me of doing, I'd be quite an idiot to step on a stage in front of 20,000 people and do that, during his testimony. According to the New York Times, Sheeran also brought a guitar and performed the four chord pattern from Thinking Out Loud. For the plaintiffs, Sheeran's second chord was compared to the minor chord in the same place in the Let's Get It On sequence, according to musicologist Alexander Stewart. Sheeran allegedly performed a big chord-based variation that he claimed to play at every single gig. He allegedly made a slight grimace when he performed the modest version Stewart recommended. Sheeran's additional remarks regarding the most recent lawsuit. The legal team defending Sheeran has argued that the song's structural resemblance is mainly due to the fact that identical structural features are typical of pop music. His attorneys claimed in a court filing that, quote, the two songs share copies of a similar and unprotectable chord progression that was readily accessible to all songwriters, according to the AP. Future plans for Ed Sheeran and the larger discussion of music originality. Despite the fact that it is yet unclear how the case against Ed Sheeran will turn out, it has brought attention to the divisive topic of music originality. Some contend that because there are a finite number of chords and notes, it is natural that some songs will sound identical to others. Others argue that musicians should develop their own distinctive sound rather than merely mimicking the work of others. No matter how it turns out, the case might have repercussions for the music business as a whole, especially in regard to the usage of certain chord progressions and melodies. In order to avoid being accused of plagiarism, this could make musicians more circumspect about using musical components that are similar to those in already existing compositions. In spite of the continuing legal fight, Ed Sheeran has kept on touring and releasing new songs. On his career and his reputation in the music industry, the lawsuit's long-term effects are yet to be determined. The discussion around musical uniqueness is likely to go on for a very long time to come, as new artists develop and established ones continue to push the frontiers of what is conceivable in terms of sound and melody. Despite the fact that some people may see the situation as being black or white, it is really a complicated and nuanced subject that calls for serious thought and continuing debate. The case's verdict and its implications the case against Ed Sheeran was still pending as of the current knowledge cutoff of September 2021, and the verdict had not been made public. But if the court were to side with Ed Townsend's estate and decide that Sheeran had plagiarized Let's Get It On, that decision might have a big impact on the music business as a whole. It may establish an example for future copyright violation cases, especially those involving songs with identical chord progressions or melodies, which is one possible consequence. Additionally, it might prompt closer examination and lawsuits against other musicians who are accused of plagiarizing, as well as more careful thought on the part of the musicians when producing new music. If the judge decides in Sheeran's favor and determines that the comparable elements between the two songs are simply shallow, it may give other musicians some peace of mind regarding the possibility of being accused of plagiarism for writing music that just so happens to include components of other songs. Regardless of the result, the case has spurred crucial conversations about the problem of musical originality and the equilibrium between using previous artists as motivation and coming up with something really original. It serves as a reminder that while music is a global language that has the power to unite people, it is also a complicated, difficult business with moral and legal ramifications. The lawsuit filed against Ed Sheeran for suspected plagiarism is still being discussed and debated in the music business. While some contend that there are only a finite number of notes and chords, others think that musicians have a duty to be original and develop their own distinctive sound. Regardless of the result of the litigation, 
Ed Sheeran continues to be one of the most successful and well-liked musicians of the modern period, with a devoted following and a bright future ahead of him.